Good morning, everyone. Um, I think we're going to get started. Uh, thanks for coming on a Friday morning. Um, so with the recent advances in natural language understanding and speech recognition, uh, it's become fairly easy to add a conversational interface to your application. So once you build that conversational interface, the question then becomes, how do you make it available uh, to your users? So one way is to just add this conversational interface to your existing mobile or web applications. But I think you know, that really the true potential of a conversational interface is realized when you add that interface to an existing platform like Facebook Messenger, uh, expose it through Slack, uh, expose it through messaging, uh, through, via text messaging, through Twilio SMS, and so on and so forth. So your users don't even have to install an app to get access to your business logic and your application backends. Um, so in this session, we're going to talk about uh, building a sophisticated, reliable, and scalable conversational interface. And we're also going to talk about how to build uh, integrations into third-party platforms. Um, so as an example, uh, we're going to use Skype as one of the third-party uh, platforms. Within Amazon Lex, there are built-in uh, integrations available. Right now, uh, there are a few integrations available, but uh, this will be useful for people trying to build um, custom integrations. Um, and so we're going to use Skype as an example, which is currently not available through the console. And then we're going to see um, how we can add uh, support for voice as well as messaging. I'm also going to talk about um, a couple of um, related services uh, within the AWS portfolio, uh, AWS Lambda and API Gateway, especially AP, uh, AWS Lambda, since Lambda is, is closely interconnected with, with Amazon Lex. So let's get started. Before I jump into the solution and the specific and the details, let's talk about uh, conversational interfaces and why they are so, why is this such a fundamental shift uh, in our industry? So if you think about it, uh, you have, traditionally you've had, you know, your data and logic residing at the back end and you, you expose that to your end users through a graphical user interface or a GUI. Now with these advancements in, in natural language understanding, speech recognition, this has become possible where you can easily build this conversational interface. And what does, what does that do? So what it does is it, it exposes your application to your users where your users can really interact with it in a very natural way, right? And if, if you think about it right now, it's, it's easy to build these conversational interfaces to your applications. And you can really delight the users right now because they won't be expecting this, right? But as is the case in technology, pretty soon we're going to be at a point where your customers are just going to expect a conversational interface, some kind of conversational interface to your application. So it's, it's, it's a great time to get started in this. The main AWS service that um, that provides this capability, lets you build these conversational interfaces, is Amazon Lex. Um, we'll talk about that, but before we jump into it, Amazon Lex lets you provide, uh, lets you build this conversational interface, but also gives you the capability to integrate uh, with fee of the select uh, third party integrations. We have Right now, integrations built in the console for Slack, Facebook Messenger, Twilio SMS, and we recently added Kick messaging as well. So what's so hard? Why, why, I mean, why do you need Amazon Lex, 
right? Uh, if you wanted to build a conversational interface, why not go and implement it yourself? There are a couple of major non-trivial things that are going on here. First is speech recognition. So if your bot or your conversational interface needs to support voice, then you need a mechanism to convert user input from voice into text. Uh, and so an advanced speech recognition engine is, is very important. And secondly, natural language understanding. So once you have those words, how do you derive meaning out of it, right? So these are really non-trivial uh, technologies to implement yourself. And so this is something that comes uh, packed into Amazon Lex, and it's the same technology that powers um, Alexa. And so it's proven, it's scalable, thousands of people, millions of people use it every day, so you know it's, it's, it's high quality. So let's dig in a little bit and look at some of the, some of the concepts within Amazon Lex. Uh, how many of you in this room, with a show of hands, have used Amazon Lex? Just to give me an idea, okay. So about maybe 40% of the room. Um, so for those of you who haven't, uh, haven't looked at Lex or haven't used it, um, there are a few different concepts that you need to be aware of before interacting with the console. It's, it's, fairly, it's a fairly simple service. Um, and I think the best way to explain all these concepts is to take the analogy of a graphical user interface or GUI, um, uh, GUI interface, right? Um, so the first is, is your intents. And intents uh, is essentially your top level menu. So if you think about it in a GUI, you have a top level menu. And intents is essentially that. It's, if you are building a bot, what is the top menu of options that you're gonna provide your users? And so in this example, we have a, a travel booking bot that I'll be, you know, uh, I'll be using as an example throughout the session. And so in a travel agency or a company like uh, a travel, agent, a travel booking agency, you'll have um, intents such as book a hotel, book a room, or book a flight, right? Uh, and so intents map to a top level menu. The next is utterances. What is your end user going to say that's gonna to map to these intents? So clicking or hovering over a menu, right? Uh, that, is an int uh, that is essentially an utterance. So utterance is a spoken word within Lex that maps to a certain intent. Um, and so you define a bunch of intents and for each intent you define a bunch of sample utterances that your users can, can say or you expect them to say. And the Amazon Lex backend engine then extrapolates that. So just think about that, you know, while in legacy bots you'll ha you had to hard code all these, these utterances. Here you give us a few sample utterances and the backend engine actually extrapolates from that. So there could be tens or hundreds of ways users can say, a user can say that, hey, I wanna book a hotel or book a hotel room for me. And the backend engine actually is able to decipher meaning out of it. Next is slots. So going back to our analogy of a GUI, slots is nothing more than form fields, essentially. Once the intent is recognized, um, the Lex engine goes into an interview mode and it, it, it gathers all these fields, uh, web form fields essentially that are referred to as slots within, within Lex. And finally, um, in order to fulfill the, the request from the user, uh, we give you the capability to define a code hook into AWS Lambda. And AWS Lambda, is, um, as you know, is our uh, event-driven serverless compute service that lets you uh, define functions. Uh, and you can integrate uh, Amazon Lex with, with the function, and you can say, okay, once I have all these fields filled out, call my, uh, call my function. And that's where your business logic resides, and you can fulfill the request from the user. Um, one thing I should point out um, is this code hook is not just for fulfillment, but every time you receive a message into Lex, it calls a code, hole, a code hook, and that's called a validation code hook as well. 
So for example, if you're trying to gather uh, an email address um, uh, from a user, uh, you ask for their email address and they provide you that email address, a code hook call is called into AWS Lambda where you can have a validation function that validates whether it's, it's a valid email or not. Um, and there are a few different um, slot types uh, that are built in. Uh, and if you use Alexa skills, most of those um, slot types are available in, uh, in Amazon Lex as well. So you can take advantage, uh, advantage of stuff like, you know, hey, I want to book a hotel room tomorrow, and it'll drive the actual date for tomorrow automatically. So again, a very natural way to uh, interact with your user. And so let's look at, a, look at an actual example. And so, for example, you know, same, continuing with the same example, we have, a, we have a bot that books a hotel. The user says, I want to book a hotel in NYC. And the first thing it hits is the automatic speech recognition engine since this is an audio input. And so the automatic speech recognition engine converts the voice into a set of words. And those set of words are fed into our natural language understanding NLU engine. And the NLU engine then de de deciphers, extracts meaning out of those set of words. And in this case, it has deciphered two pieces of information. First, what is the user's intent? So I know that the user wants to book a hotel. And secondly, one of the slot values is detected. Because the user is saying, hey, I want to book a hotel in NYC, I can recognize that the user is, is referring to New York City. And that, that is a capability that's sort of uh, available you know, naturally within, uh, within Lex. And so we already have one of the slot values filled out. And so Lex will then go into sort of an interview mode uh, and gather the rest of, uh, of the two fields. And so now we have city, check-in, and check-out, and we have all the three fields that are necessary to fulfill this, uh, this, uh, this request from the user. And so we send a confirmation uh, message back to the user. User says yes, no, and you know the yes, no intent is automatically also supported within Amazon Lex. And so if the user says yes, we process the, the fulfillment request within AWS Lambda, and we send this, uh, this confirmation back. Now this confirmation is, is, uh, is coming back in text form, and since the user interacted with us in, 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 through voice, we want a mechanism to convert this into voice. And this is something that's sort of integrated into the Lex console, uh, but essentially Lex is calling uh, another service. It's using our another service uh, called Amazon Poly that converts, that's our text-to-speech service. Now, if you were to build uh, this solution within Amazon Lex, you, have a, you wouldn't have to use Amazon Poly separately because it's sort of integrated into Lex. Uh, but if you had other applications, such as an IVR, where you needed text-to-speech support, uh, Amazon Poly is a very, very powerful service. High quality, supports many different voices and dialects and, and many different languages for text-to-speech. And you can define um, custom pronunciation uh, within uh, Amazon Poly as well. So the response goes back to the user uh, in voice uh, format here. So that's how a complete end-to-end -end message works. Now let's look at AWS Lambda. For those of you who are not familiar, I'm not going to spend too much time on, um, on this. Uh, AWS Lambda is, is our event-driven serverless uh, uh, service. Essentially, you define a function, um, and uh, you can run that function, and, and that function is invoked uh, either manually or through, a, through an event trigger that you define. And we have about 17 or 18 different integrations into other AWS services that can trigger Lambda functions. So it's really well integrated into the AWS platform. Um, uh, look at 
let's look at a few, uh, the Lambda components. You have a functions, like I said, uh, there's support for uh, many different languages, Python, Node.js, um, Java, uh, and so you can write your function in, your la the, in, the, in the language of uh, your choice. You define an event source. Um, the Lambda service then makes sure that your, that your function is going to run uh, in a reliable way, and it scales automatically. So you don't have to do anything about scaling and resiliency. Um, and then the, you, have the, you have the choice of running your functions either outside of VPC or inside your own VPC as well. And so for those of you who are conscious about security, uh, you can run your uh, Lambda function within a VPC as well. Another service that actually I'm gonna use uh, as part of this uh, solution is the Amazon API Gateway. Now, the API Gateway is a very powerful service to make an API endpoint available to your end users or to your partners that, 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 uh, that can actually then call your APIs. Now, it, it, it has a lot of advanced functionality, like you can define throttles, you can implement uh, security on your API, um, uh, you can monitor your, uh, your API, so a lot of advanced functionality, but in this solution that I'm gonna be talking about today, I am uh, not gonna um, configure most of these advanced features. And so if, you, if we look at, uh, uh, if you take a look at the, the GUI for the API gateway, uh, essentially you're defining your pads uh, for the API, and for each path, then you're defining the different HTTP or HTTPS methods uh, on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see a test harness. So that's a, that's a super awesome capability within both um, API Gateway and Lambda, that there's an integrated test harness. And so for everything that you define, you can, you can define a test harness and then test um, your code uh, and your functionality. And so the other four boxes are essentially a configuration, advanced configuration, where you're defining the input um, uh, format. What, how do you want to transport that? Uh, transport that uh, sort, uh, um, excuse me, transform that. Uh, and, then, uh, and then what backend compute service you're going to use to pass this request along. And the same goes for the response as well. How do I want to, uh, uh, how do I want to uh, uh, convert the, the response, reformat the uh, response, and what's my actual response format going to be? That's, well, that's what's being configured here. So let's look at the actual example. And so in this example, I'll be, uh, I've, I've created a solution, and the, uh, the whole solution and the step-by-step -step instructions are on GitHub, and I'll be uh, sharing the link for that at the end of the presentation. Uh, and so Skype is one of the third-party uh, uh, apps, uh, has a huge user base, but we don't provide a, a built-in integration. And so let's look, take a look at what this architecture is going to look like. So we have an end user that sends in a message, and because uh, Skype is owned by Microsoft, uh, Microsoft has this framework called the bot framework. And that's where we're going to be defining our bot. Uh, and so we define a, a bot and configure it with a webhook uh, address that's, uh, that points to our API gateway. The API gateway then forwards that request onto our Lambda function. And the Lambda function here, um, if you are sort of using Lex um, and you have a simple solution, maybe you have a single bot and you don't need a lot of integration, then you probably don't want to build this solution. So this is really for integrating with third-party apps that aren't supported. Um, and also for advanced routing. So let's say you have a conversational interface that consists of multiple specialized bots. Or you have a few bots that, that are implemented in, in Amazon Lex and, and there are other specialized bots that, are, that you have implemented or you're using third party uh, bot services outside of AWS. 
And so this provides you with a routing capability as well, advanced routing capability, because you've, in this solution, I'm building a, uh, a layer in, right in front of uh, Amazon Lex as well. And so the, uh, so the message goes through uh, AWS, uh, uh, the Lambda function that we have defined goes to uh, Lex and uh, Lex responds back. And so let's take a look at an example uh, architecture here where I have multiple specialized bots as part of my conversational interface, right? I'm running a travel agency. I'm saying, you know, I need a cruise booking bot that's super specialized and knows everything about cruise booking, and I have flight booking bot and so on and so forth. And what I've done is here, here is I've, I've, de uh, I've designated a concierge bot. So the initial message comes in, um, and, and uh, the user says, I want to book a cruise, and that goes to the concierge bot, which sort of detects the intent that, hey, this is probably a message or a conversation that needs to happen with my cruise booking specialized bot. What I do here is I talk to DynamoDB, and perhaps I, I, I want to persist this session, and I want to say, okay, this is a conversation that, that's meant for, um, meant for the cruise booking bot, and so any uh, following message is going to go to the cruise booking bot. So it's just a simple exa um, example that you can really uh, implement a very powerful solution using this, this sort of architecture. All right, so we'll, we'll, let's go into the step-by-step uh, uh, -step process that is involved uh, uh, in order to create this architecture. So the first thing I need to do, uh, step number one, is for Skype um, or for any other service, you'd have to go to the actual provider and see what their uh, API, how they expose their API. And so in this case, Microsoft is exposing their API through their uh, bot framework, and they also have a bot SDK. So I'll be utilizing both uh, the bot framework and the addresses right there. So I go and sign in with my credentials, I create a bot, uh, and my bot is called uh, Talk to Lex. Um, and then I say, okay, uh, since this is a bot that's going to be in, in Amazon Lex and I'm going to be using the SDK, I specify that. Um, and then I go into the configuration. And for the configuration, uh, and this is pretty standard. Any API that you're going to interact with should have a um, a security mechanism. So I go ahead and create my Microsoft app ID and password uh, to authenticate, to make sure that my endpoint can only receive messages from the, from the bot framework, and nobody else can uh, overwhelm my endpoint. And so I create the, uh, the app password. The next step is, in order to test this, uh, bot uh, in a uh, desktop client or a web client, you need to have this added to your contacts. So that's, this is a very uh, important step, um, minor but important, that you'd have to click on this and then add that uh, test bot to your contacts. Now, if you open up your Skype client, uh, that ex test bot is going to be there. But it's not going to do anything, so we'll, we'll go on and we, we'll give it some intelligence. And so in this solution, since this is an advanced session, I've already created a travel uh, booking. I'm using one of the uh, Amazon Lex travel booking example bots. So I've built the bot in, uh, in Amazon Lex. And you can, if you go and sign into the Amazon Lex console, you can very easily get started with that example bot. So I'm not going to spend uh, time on, on how to create the Amazon Lex bot itself, uh, since that's, you know, that's you can, there's a wizard interface that guides you through that. And so uh, the next step in integrating this is to define my IAM role. And so with it, when you're working in AWS, by default, one service talking to another, one service using another service is, is, is not permitted. So you have to explicitly grant permission for one service to use another AWS service on your behalf. And so in this, uh, step, what I'm essentially doing is I'm giving AWS Lambda permission to do two things. And if you look at on, on the right-hand side, there's that IAM statement. Um, it's, it is sort of uh, uh, involved, but essentially it's just do, doing two things. 
It's, it's allowing my Lambda function to write to CloudWatch logs, number one. And number two, it's allowing Lambda to use the post text API for Amazon Lex. And so I defined that and I create a role uh, using this policy. And I move on to my next step. And this is sort of the meat of the solution um, where I'm creating the actual Lambda function that, 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 has my, uh, that has my custom logic for the front end in front of Amazon Lex. Here, I can implement uh, my routing of messages, how I want uh, the routing to work between different maybe specialized bots and so on and so forth. And so the first thing I do is I make sure that any kind of credentials uh, I don't want to put that, them in, in, into the code, right? That's just not a good practice. Um, so I define a, a few environment variables where I put in my um, uh, security credentials. Uh, secondly, any kind of variables that I don't want to hard code, like the bot name and the alias, I use environment variables for that as well. Um, and so, so I create the environment variables. Next thing I do is I, I, I pick out the right execution role, the execution role that I defined in the last step. And then I go ahead and I, I, I implement the code. And this is, uh, you know, don't get scared. I mean, it's, it's not very complicated. It's just implemented in node.js. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using uh, two different uh, libraries and SDKs. One is the bot builder library uh, for node.js from, uh, from Microsoft. And the other one is the AWS SDK that we provide you for easier um, access into, uh, into the AWS uh, APIs. Uh, I'm creating a connector, and I'm simply taking a message that comes in from Skype, extract that message out, and send it out to the Lex runtime. And so Lex has these two different uh, uh, higher level APIs. It's the, API, uh, it's the runtime and the bot creation API. Bot creation is where you can automatically create bots and configure them via an API. And then the runtime is how you interact with um, Amazon Lex uh, when, when you want to interact with the, with the Lex bot itself. And so over here, if you, if you see if I could use the pointer here, you see this call into the Lex runtime where I'm actually passing on the message that's being received by, uh, from, uh, from Skype uh, and passing that on to, uh, into Lambda. And, and I extract the, the, the response back and send it back. So not very complicated, simple uh, the implementation. The next step is to create an API, uh, gate, uh, API endpoint, and I, use that, uh, I do that using the API gateway. Now, API gateway can be a little bit daunting if you're just getting started with it. Um, the easiest way that I found out uh, to reduce the configuration uh, is to use uh, the Lambda proxy. And so the Lambda proxy mode within API gateway is provided for, uh, for exactly these type of solutions where you're integrating API gateway with Lambda. And so I go into the integration, I, I define a post uh, method, and I go into the integration uh, request. And once I go into the integration request, I can just check this checkbox to say, OK, this is just a Lambda proxy. I don't want to do uh, advanced um, modifications through templates and whatnot. So there's a lot of functionality within, uh, within API Gateway that lets you sort of handle the, the various, uh, if the two endpoints are not fully compatible and you can do conversions and whatnot. And so I don't want to do that, so I, I picked the Lambda proxy mode. Essentially what it's doing is, is just passing along the message. And what I get once I deploy this, uh, this API is I get a, a, an invoke URL, which is an HTTPS uh, endpoint. And so I take this endpoint and I go back into the bot framework uh, configuration. Uh, and where I, uh, I just uh, created the app credentials, there's a field for the messaging endpoint. And I go in and configure that uh, in the messaging endpoint. So at this point, we should have a working solution, right? So let's take a look at, uh, so this is a client uh, that's interacting 
uh, with Amazon Lex. So this is a uh, Skype client that's uh, running on my phone that I've recorded. So I, uh, so I go and search for that within my context, uh, and then I send it a message. And so I say, I want to book a hotel room in LA. And so it's recognizing my intent, and it's also recognizing the location. And so I've recognized that LA is a location. So it asks, what, what day do you want to check in? And I just say tomorrow. I don't even have to specify the date. The back end automatically, the Lex runtime goes and extracts that date out of that and says, OK, how many nights? Again, I don't have to specify the number two. I can just spell it out like I'm talking to a human. And so you see that it kind of extracted the date out of that. And so this was run on 10.17, and so tomorrow meant 10.18. And it asked me for my confirmation, and I can, I can mess and interact. So very quickly, you can get started with Lex, and you can expose all of this functionality through messaging platforms and voice platforms that already millions of people are, uh, people are using. So you sort of avoid the, the app fatigue that's out there. So now, messaging is great. Uh, you know, uh, it's somewhat easy, right? Uh, what about voice? A lot of people, like, we love messaging, but a lot of people still like to call, right? Or they want to talk to someone. And there are certain tasks where you actually, if, even if you're an avid messaging user, you want to go, you want to talk to someone. And so how do you handle that? And so, so you have to add support for voice as well. And the first thing to realize, you know, a lot of people talk about Amazon Lex as, as sort of the chatbot service. And I think the term chatbot is a little bit misleading. And I've, that's why I've used conversational interfaces. Uh, because chatbot implies that you know, your, your intelligent bot is, can only communicate via chat. And that's not true. Voice is a big part, uh, and people still like to call. And so uh, you have to really think about your solution uh, with voice in mind. And so Lex can support both voice and text. And so for this specific implementation, uh, these are some of the things that I learned uh, as I developed the solution. Uh, first of all, uh, for media processing, uh, Lambda is probably not a good choice, and so you'd have to use uh, uh, the combination, the, uh, the design pattern with EC2. So you have an EC2 instance that's fronted by an ELB, and ELB is our elastic load balancer. Uh, and you generate that uh, endpoint, the URL that I generated using uh, API Gateway using the ELB. So the ELB points to the EC2 instance, and you should always have EC2 instances in multiple availability zone. Make sure that you have a high availability. That's something that you don't have to worry about with, with API Gateway and Lambda, since those are serverless services, and they, they handle that for you. And so I, I took that, and there's plenty of uh, example code available on the uh, bot builder uh, GitHub for Microsoft. So go and, and use that uh, as the starting point. Uh, then I use the record dialog uh, that uh, the Bot Builder SDK uh, provides. Uh, and I'm recording the audio. Uh, and then it's a very crude example, but it's just there to show you that this, is, this can be done. It's, it's not that hard. Uh, and you can implement uh, a fairly sophisticated IVR just with this stuff. Um, or enhance existing IVRs with machine learning and natural language understanding, right? Uh, so <clears throat> what's different with this solution is, uh, yes, I'm using the record dialog. Uh, and then instead of using the post text API, I'm using the post content API. I, I specify within, within my HTTP headers uh, the content type, the type of audio file that I'll be passing along. And then also I'm specifying what I am expecting to accept back. So what I'm accepting and what I'm specifying there is that I'm, uh, I will accept a text response. And the reason I'm saying that, it's just easier to send that response back 
uh, to the bot framework and let it uh, convert that text into, into speech. And, and then I use this session object that's, uh, that's made available through the bot framework. Uh, and I take my, my URL that is exposed uh, by, the, uh, by the ELB, and I configure that over here in, in, into, the config, uh, into the BART configuration within the BART framework website. And that's, that's all there is to it. So let's quickly take a look and listen in. And hopefully we should get audio for this. And so this is a, a Skype uh, desktop solution, uh, a desktop client that, that's running on my laptop. So let me go ahead and call Hello. my bot. Hello, thanks for calling the Amazon Lex Travel bot. You can prompt users to record a message. After the beep, tell us what you would like to do. You can say things like, Book a room or book a car. Book a room. What city will you be staying in? So as you can see, you know, uh, I was able to record that audio, send it out to Amazon Lex, submit it, uh, and then get a response back, and uh, it, it understood the intent. Uh, and so I can have the same interface, the same bot, and I can send messages to it, I can send voice into it. So it's a very powerful solution. So I would encourage you to go ahead and give Lex a try if you haven't already used it. Uh, we provide a generous uh, free tier. Uh, and so give Lex a try, it's very easy to, uh, to, uh, to get started with this. And so all the code and the implementation guide and everything is, is out there. So take a picture if you would like to follow along and create this. Uh, just take a picture and, and go and, and grab this code from GitHub. It's, it's publicly available. So at this time, I would like to open it up for, for any questions that you might have. I'll leave it up there. If you don't mind going to the microphone or possible. So two unrelated questions. I'll start with the easy one. Uh -huh. the, the chat bot example shows, you know, the, the one on, on the Lex bot, if you just go through the wizard, you mm -hmm. can use audio through Lambda. Are you saying you couldn't use audio with Lambda, you prefer EC2 be specifically because of the Skype limitations? Yeah, it was uh, an uh, limitations with the Skype library as well. Uh, but it's just that it's just better to use a, 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 a persistent compute service, right? Uh, and so you're creating a call, and there's a session that gets established. And so L Lambda sort of, um, the way Lambda works didn't really operate with the bot library. Okay. The second question is, can you tell us more about the orchestration between the different specialized bots, and is this a way to go over the 110 limit, can, can we use multiple? Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, that's a great point. Yes, you can. So orchestration, and so that that uh, diagram that you saw was an example uh, of the architecture. And so what you can do is really go beyond that limit by uh, by creating the concierge bot. But you obviously have to be um, there's a 110 limit within a bot, right? Uh, and so you have to be careful because if you're uh, defining too many intents. Uh, you could have results where users are getting no intents or getting wrong intents, right? And so you don't want to, so that, that's a delicate balance. But yes, you can use that solution and sort of give, uh, bring a tree and have branches uh, that go deep into that, that tree rather than just having a flat tree structure, right? Okay, thank you. Yes, please. On one of the earlier slides, I think you showed a DynamoDB table in JSON form a little bit. Yeah. Um, and in the message field, mm -hmm. it said, like, I want to book a hotel, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so I, my question is, how do you collect that information 
in Alexa, like the full user response, not just yeah. the Safais, but everything they said. Yeah, absolutely. So that's provided uh, as you as you integrate Lex with Lambda, Lex will post all of that information into into Lambda, right? And and when you're talking, there there are two layers. There's a layer of Lambda that's in front of Lex. Then there's Amazon Lex, and then there's the a fulfillment code hook that also exists in, in Lambda as well. So you have access to your, uh, all of that information in the JSON object that's passed into those, those functions. And so you can take that and grab the user ID information that you're providing, uh, uh, the intent that was detected. One of the cool things about the post uh, text API is that actually you can use it to do a short form ASR as well. And so you can, you can uh, input an audio file and in response, you'll get an input transcript, uh, transcript that actually gives you the text as well. So you have access to all of that information with the, the JSON object that's passed along. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> I've got a, a couple of questions. Yes. The first is regarding the front end, right? Does uh, the whole Lax framework provide any SDKs for the front ends? Uh, or is it purely either text or speech? Because you could return more than text to the front end, right? It could be a card of many. Yes, for yes, example. for so cards and stuff, ab absolutely. So this is, um, uh, you, you do have, uh, Amazon Lex has its own um, API or uh, its own addition to the AWS SDK. So that, all that functionality is built into that SDK. And so if I wanted to return a card, uh, to Skype, if it supports any cards, and so for example, Facebook Messenger mm -hmm. has support for cards, that's all supported, absolutely. And so yes, uh, you can make your interaction much richer with, with, with this capability. So cards and, right. and all of that is supported. Um, the other question was regarding conversational uh, context and, and you know, session context. How yes. does Lex keep this context? as you traverse through the conversation, and there could be multiple intents mm -hmm. during the conversation. How does Lex handle yeah. this? So we provide you with all the constructs. So there's a session object that's passed back and forth. And so your application is aware of the session. Right. And it keeps, uh, Amazon Lex will keep track of it because you're providing a user ID as an input, and the session is, is kept track. So every uh, request that goes in has a session. And every response that comes back also has the session. So you can keep track of it. Now, as far as handling all of that user interaction of where you say, OK, uh, user just says, OK, I want to go, I want to exit this conversation, bye. And so you want to gracefully do that, or you want to gracefully, gracefully transition between different intents, that's up to you to implement. And so we provide you with all the, the, the constructs um, uh, at a platform level but it's up to you to have that graceful transition between different intents and whatnot. And so that, all that capability you can, you can implement in the, in the backend uh, code hook within Lambda as well. Okay, sorry, another question. Sure. So how does, how does uh, Lex handle hand, handing over to a, to a live agent, for example, uh, integrating with, you know, could be Amazon Connect or it could be a Genesis yeah. Uh, you know, live yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, I believe uh, the, the, there is talk of an integration uh, with, with Genesis. I think there was a separate session as well that you, uh, uh, that you can go and watch on YouTube uh, for, with Genesis specifically. But yes, absolutely. If, if for example, um, there's no intent detected, right? Uh, you can then implement that, uh, uh, that logic within your backend Lambda function to call uh, a certain number within Amazon Connect or, or into your existing IVR. So that's something that you can, you can definitely implement. And uh, so error handling is, is very, very important here, right? As is uh, the case with graphical user <coughs> interfaces over here, you don't want your user to get frustrated by saying the same thing over and over again. You want to may maybe have them repeat once and then just go to a human. Okay, final question is around supervised learning. Could you show us the supervised learning graphical you know, user interface for training? Uh, that, that's sort of the back end within Lex, right? Uh, the training is um, we're using existing models, right? And as you provide us with sample utterances within the console, uh, those models then get fine-tuned. So within machine learning, you can take existing models that have been trained on massive amounts of data, right? 
And no, like, not every one of us have access to massive amounts of data. It's easier for companies like Amazon to train those. And so we're using that model that we have trained on the massive amounts of messages and, and human conversations. And then we take your utterances and then we sort of fine tune that. And so you fine tune that model and that's exposed. Uh, but um, as far as actually looking into the backend model, that's not something that's, that's uh, exposed. Um, you're welcome to train your own model if you have the expertise uh, to, uh, if you want to train your own model. Uh, there are frameworks and libraries that we provide. Obviously, you can use stuff like MXNet, which is our preferred framework. Uh, you can use TensorFlow and other deep learning libraries to implement your own, own stuff. I would really encourage you to look at uh, SageMaker. That's, uh, that was announced, so that's pretty cool where you can actually go in and uh, implement this train your model, and then have it uh, updated as you go through, um, as you go through updating and running uh, your model in production. Um, so you, if you have a complex solution, or if you, if you have a lot of data that you, all, that you have access to, and that could be your, your IP, right? And so that's an advantage that you should be, that you should be taking, right? Uh, uh, data is gold in this day and age. You, know, every, you have access to all these algorithms uh, and models that are already available out on the open and the powerful frameworks. All you need to do, if you have access to data and you have interesting questions that need uh, interesting answers, you can go and grab that data uh, and train your own models, absolutely. This kind of higher level service is for people uh, that don't have that data uh, mm. but still want to provide an, an outstanding customer experience, right? So if you are, you're in a certain vertical where you have a lot of data, take advantage of that and maybe look into training your own model. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. But just following up on that, you're not suggesting that we could plug that into Lex in some way? Mm, uh, you, you can't plug it into Lex. Lex is a higher level API, okay. right? Uh, so that's not something that's supported. But uh, what you can do is, uh, for example, you have a very specific vertical specific bot that does something like, for example, deals in certain uh, sector of the healthcare, for example, right? Uh, and so if you have a lot of data then you train your own model, right? You can uh, use other services within our portfolio, uh, the deep insight service where you can extract um, uh, meaning for extract, if you wanna extract dates, um, and other stuff like duration uh, and yes and no intent. So you can use the Lex API and uh, those other APIs, uh, but then you can route the message along. Uh, and you can implement that in your backend Lambda function as well. Yeah, I've, I've seen circumstances where Lex has misinterpreted the uh -huh. utterance and assigned it to the wrong intent. Mm -hmm. I don't see a capability to like inform it of that and remove so that's something that we're working on. Uh, uh, comprehensive error handling is something absolutely you should be implementing. Uh, there is some error handling that's while you're in the intent, um, uh, there is a message around no intent detected and what, whatnot. So you, you can gracefully handle that situation, uh, but there are certain scenarios, certain, uh, uh, certain scenarios where you, you cannot, and so your user will end up getting uh, a generic message. And that's something that's, uh, that we are working on to improve the customer experience. But yes, I mean, uh, if you do have a lot of different intents, you have to be cognizant of, of uh, pro pro not providing too many intents where you're maybe uh, making it ambiguous for the backend engine uh, to detect the intent. Yeah, unfortunately, our use case, there's a lot of things like booking a hotel room or something, in that example, there's a lot of things you can do with that room. Yes. So it begin, becomes very confusing at that point. Right. So right. your suggestion in that case is what? Suggesting uh, that altering the utterances, so play around with the utterances, the number of utterances, um, how you provide the, the sort of slot values within those utterances. So just play around with that and see how if you can improve the accuracy there, right? Uh, and then also look at a solution like this where you have multiple specialized bots. And so once you, for example, go into booking a hotel room, you, you go into that and maybe you have multiple branches where you have, uh, you know, within that room, 
uh, you have multiple specifications, like you want a room with a view, queen bed, qu uh, king bed, and whatever, right? And so you can, um, you can use multiple bots, but you really have to play around with the actual accuracy. You have to play around with the occurrences and see if it works for you. Okay, last one. Um, mm -hmm. We have use cases where some slots would be required depending on the user's context or whatever, and, not, and sometimes those slots wouldn't be required. Mm -hmm. Would you have a suggestion for that? There doesn't seem to be a way to dynamically say, I, I need a slot to be required or not. So, uh, so within uh, the Amazon Lex console, there is a required checkbox. Right. So you can like specify whether a slot is required or not. No, but not. I mean on a per session, per user context, some, some will require it, some won't require it. How would you deal with that? That is somewhat of um, a complicated scenario, right? And where you, on a per user session, you'd probably have to implement like multiple bots where you have made, you can make that slot required or not required in one bot or the other. And then you have a, a pre-processing layer that determines whether the user, whether this field is required for this bot. And so you could use a solution like this um, that I presented where you can, you can make that decision and then route it accordingly. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, actually, I wanted to add a little, that was the kind of question I had as well. Uh -huh. Is the slots, can you pull it out from a DynamoDB or dynamically populate it? Because, you know, today I have five slots and tomorrow if I need another five slots and you know, it keeps changing. So can it be dynamically populated based on the intent? Uh, uh, yeah, at this point, I wouldn't recommend like making the slot themselves uh, or slot enumeration types and stuff like that, actually uh, changing it on the fly while the, the user is interacting. That's probably not a good solution. But what you can do is uh, use a generic type of uh, a slot type, right? Take a text back and then handle that information in, in your backend Lambda function. And, and so <clears throat> if you have a very specific slot type, um, you can just grab that information as text and then actually you'll have to do manual work on the back end to okay. get that implemented. Unfortunately, th there's, there is a trade-off balance between making it easier for the, the, the users to use this product versus making it very, very flexible. Right. We believe it's very flexible, but there are certain use cases where you'd have, to, you'd have to implement a lot of custom logic at the back end. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, if you implement that custom logic, that becomes your intellectual property. Right, and so if you're 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 going and implementing that, that you know you have something of value for your customers. Right, and and, and in addition to that, is mm -hmm. can you make the slots to have a pattern matching kind of model, so that way, you know, if I have, hey, I want to book a hotel, um, I want to book a hotel, I want to you know get a hotel, you know, this is all, but hotel is the key word. Mm -hmm. So anything which is this phrase, I want to pattern match as a slot. Mm -hmm. So that way, you know, it's, I don't have like thousands. So this of is like, this is a little bit more advanced than, than, than pattern matching, right? So that, that's where you have to really play around with the utterances. So you're providing maybe eight or 10 or a dozen different utterances that ha will have all those keywords in them, right? And so, uh, that's where you really uh, sort of um, uh, get into like playing with the accuracy of it based on the utterances, right? Uh, but as far as uh, actually doing uh, any kind of like regex or, or something, right. um, that's something that you can again, you'll have to implement Good. in the back end. Okay. But the console doesn't give you that capability. Right. And the last one is the fulfillment thing. Uh -huh. You know, the fulfillment, do you really need a fulfillment in the in the in the skill builder kind of thing, or do it in Lambda. I mean, because it's the same. It seemed to be duplicated. Yeah. So it's there, there's a lot of functionality that's been replicated from the from the Alexa skills. I think you're referring to. Right. And so, uh, you know, Alexa skills is is under Alexa within uh, within Amazon, and this is a uh, this is a completely AWS service, right? So here, the mechanism that we are providing you. For, for implementing your own logic is AWS Lambda. And so if you want to implement that logic, you'd have to go into Lambda and, 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 and write all that. And logic. then disable the fulfillment from the... Uh, you, you can, but like, you know, you'd, you know, you'd have... The, the, within the console, there's just integration with Lambda. I see. So uh, the code hook does go into Lambda. 
Okay, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any other? Yes, questions? one a very basic question. Uh, I was trying to read the blogs and never got a, a perfect answer there. Sure. As far as voice is concerned, when do I pick Alexa voice service versus Lex? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So Alexa voice service is really meant for uh, people that are developing a voice uh, and connected device. So if, you're hard, if your company is building a hardware device, a camera or something like, like the, uh, the deep lens that we, just, uh, uh, that we just unveiled during the reInvent uh, that has a microphone and speaker, that's meant for embedding. Uh, that's the SDK that, uh, that's sort of used to embed all Alexa within a, a hardware device. Uh, and so if all you want to do is interact with your end customer, through an existing Alexa or Echo Dot device or Echo devi uh, device or any other like Sonos speaker or something like that, uh, and all you want to do is build a backend like chatbot service conversational interface, then you use Alexa. But if you are actually building that device, like a smart speaker or something, then you'd use the Alexa voice service to. to so I'll, I'll give you uh, one example. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a mobile app uh, sure. for one of our um, applications. Yeah. And uh, one request that we got was, I mean, we also have Alexa skill for the same thing. Sure. And uh, some users asked, hey, uh, we like Alexa to talk, and it's easy uh -huh. for us to uh -huh. talk and get the answers. But uh, we can't carry Alexa everywhere with us. Yes. So when we have mobile app, but we still don't want to uh, use the mobile app, yeah. like just touch it, but just talk to the mobile app, for that scenario, will Lex be the better one or... Uh, so you're saying that they want to actually talk to the mobile app? Yes. Or Alexa. So uh, app, if they yeah. want to talk to the mobile app, and maybe I should have mentioned this in, in the presentation, we do have, uh, as part of the SD mobile SDK, we give you a lot of constructs where you can integrate uh, the conversational uh, inter interface that you build with Amazon Lex right into your mobile app for Android and iOS. So, so it's very easy, it. yes, it, it's available. It's very easy to get started, right? And so as you build a, uh, a bot within Amazon Lex, you can, you can then download sample code for both iOS and, and Android and directly integrate uh, this solution into your, your apps, absolutely. Yeah, because I think when I asked them, how did you get this thought, like this sounds silly, if mobile app is there, why won't you use the mobile app? And they said, no, in the Amazon shopping app, we have that feature where we just talk to the app by clicking yes. the mic button. Yes, and absolutely. So that's all explained. There are detailed guides on, on, on the document in the documentation. If you look at Amazon uh, Lex documentation and look at the mobile apps, it will give you detailed documentation on how to integrate this into your mobile app. So absolutely. I should look at Lex, not at AVS for huh? this. So I should not look at AVS for this particular? No, you, you can uh, you know, uh, look at what, what provides a better experience for your customers. OK. Right? Um, and so I, I believe uh, the only thing that you'll be missing here is the Alexa voice. And so people like the Alexa voice. It's, it's something that they're used to. And if you want uh, that Alexa voice, I don't believe uh, Amazon Polly uh, provides that voice. And so it provides a lot of different voices and dialects and languages, but it doesn't provide the, the patented Alexa voice. And yeah. So if, you're, if your users are really comfortable with that uh, and you, you, you think that would uh, provide some value, a better experience, then go ahead and use that. OK, thank you. Yep, absolutely. Hey, Ahmad, uh, yeah. one more question. Uh, so if it's a simple use case of really just a Q&A, FAQ type of bot, where I may already have uh, uh, a knowledge base outside, mm -hmm. how would you use Lex to integrate it without replicating all the information up on the bot layer? Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a great question. Uh, I, I think, obviously, you, you, you want to um, have some kind of indexing capability to your... Uh, to your uh, it's almost some kind of an intelligent search. Engine. Yeah, it's an intelligent search, right? And so what you'll have to build in the back end is some kind of elastic search cluster or something that takes and indexes all of that information in the, in the, in the knowledge uh, center. And then, um, and then you, can, you can do, and this is something that you can implement um, uh, where you'd have to implement yourself where you go in and say, OK, I want a, a search. And if I have a, a high uh, confidence uh, result uh, that I get back, I want to present it to the user. And so that could be implemented in the back end Lambda function, where you have indexing implemented in, in another service that we have is Amazon Elasticsearch. You index all that information into Elasticsearch. Um, you call that search through your back end. 
and whatever first uh, or second uh, or two or maybe three links that you get, the top three, maybe your top one, you provide it back. And hey, is this something that you were looking for? Right? Uh, and then the user says yes or no, and based on that, uh, you close the session or you direct them to a human. So hope that helps. But yes, you'll need an index en engine in the back end. Thanks. Um, so in our use case, we have uh, customers can order products through using their voice. Mm -hmm. um, and there's thousands of products, like tens of thousands of products. And so we have a product slot. You know, we defined our own slot. Um, and what's the best way to handle that in Alexa without like putting like tens of thousands of sample, uh, slot values, mm -hmm. because it could be like any, anything really there's, there's, um, food that they can order. They can order, um, it, anything that a restaurant would use. They could, yeah. yeah, there's tons of potential slot values. I think that's a hard problem. And whenever there's a hard problem that offers an opportunity for you to, to you to implement something, right? Um, and add value. Um, I, I think there, there are many different ways, but yes, you have to be cognizant of the way, uh, how many uh, slot values are possible in enumeration. The more you will provide, uh, you will slowly decrease the accuracy of the enumeration type, right? Um, and so if you have a lot of products and each product has a bunch of different variations, Right, um, you'd have to really implement a user flow where you keep nailing down what the user is actually trying to get, right? And then keep confirming with that user. And so um, that's something that you'd have to implement in, in, in the backend Lambda function. Okay, and just to follow up on that. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we use the, in Dialogflow, we use the sys.any attribute Mm -hmm. or, uh, this is not any data type and and that just matches like anything they say so we don't have to enumerate every yeah, yeah, possible yeah, yeah. value is yeah. there any is there anything like that in alexa or is there any plan to make yeah you can you can uh, capture free text right uh within uh, lex and then it's i could envision this as as being a um uh, as being a similar solution to the knowledge base where you're capturing that information as free text and you have your indexing in the back end of all your products, right? And whatever top hit that you get from that search, you present that to the user and say, is this what you were looking for, right? And once they, once they say, yes, that's what I'm looking for, then you go into that, uh, uh, the follow-up uh, question and answer about how would you like to configure it? Okay, so you'd want it, this type of t-shirt, do you want a medium, large, extra large, and whatnot? And so I would, probably look at that where you have an index of, of your product catalog. You can search that based on what the user is, uh, is entering. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. To talk, yes, absolutely. The, the, if you're capturing uh, Lex, you, you can, absolutely you can. You can, you can, within your backend, you can call another Lex bot that you can tokenize, yeah, absolutely. And there's a, a separate services that do entity extraction and whatnot that were, uh, that were launched. So absolutely, that's something that you, can, that you can leverage. Any other questions? I think we're out of time, so we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for it.